everyone, I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and today we are going to glaze some yarn using a color that is not navy. If you've been following along with my yarn glazing journey, you'll know by now that I have found conditions that work really, really well with Dharma's Dark Navy Acid Dye, where we get that perfect kind of glazed feel. What I mean here is when we apply the dye sort of all over the yarn, but it doesn't go all the way through each of the plies. It sort of settles on the surface, giving an airbrushed look where you can see part of whatever other color is underneath. And so this is yarn that you can either over dye to add more color into the dimension of the layers, or you can start off dyeing the yarn first and then adding a glaze on top. Today, I want to try doing a glaze with a color that is not super dark. I want to use Pink Orchid Acid Dye. This color I know strikes really quickly, so we have the potential to get a nice glaze. Uh, and hopefully there's enough pigment that we would be able to see what's going on beneath the surface really, really well. Now, eventually, I would like to try to do this Pink Orchid Glaze over a yellow yarn, because I think that having the pink and yellow maybe would give some like really cool, potentially sunset kind of vibes. I'm not entirely sure, but I think it would be really, really beautiful. But before we try doing this over a yellow, let's try doing this on bare yarn to see if it works, and then we know if we need to modify the conditions further or not. Before we go and start glazing our first colorway, I want to give a huge shout out and thank you to today's lab partner, Val. Val, thank you so much for being my lab partner for this episode of Dive Hot Weekly. Today, we are going to dye 200 grams of Knit Picks Swish DK yarn. This yarn is 100% superwash merino, and the plies aren't particularly high twist or anything. In general, it's a little bit easier to get that shallow color penetration on yarn that has thicker plies and is a little higher twist. But I wanted to start with Stroll because if this color works well on this base, then I know it would also work well on bases with more twist and thicker plies. So this is our starting point. But I've pre-soaked the yarn in just some plain tap water for oh, well over 30 minutes. For our dye today, we have a 1% stock solution of Dharma's Pink Orchid Acid Dye. And I'm curious how much we have. My goal was to have at least 35 uh, milliliters of this, so at least 0.3 grams of dye. And I have almost exactly 38 milliliters of this dye stock left. So I think that that should be pretty good on 200 grams of yarn. What I didn't do is go back and look at some of the videos that I've done with Pink Orchid, like Valentine's Day. This is a pretty vibrant pink, and so I feel like a little bit can go a um, very nice way. So. Let's go over to the dye bath now. It's possible I'll end up wishing that we had more dye, but at least this gives us a starting point. So 38 milliliters of this dye is the equivalent of 0.38 grams of the dye. And so we'll be dyeing 200 grams of yarn, but hopefully we should get the color nice and shallow on the surface. In this pot, I started with 32 cups of plain tap water because I used to start trying with the glaze doing short amounts of time with high acid and high heat, but I found I ended up with getting that glazed feel when I started cold with a large volume of water, high acid, and then added the yarn because the dye would slowly absorb onto the yarn, but it would be more likely to strike on that surface, which worked really, really nicely. Following the navy conditions that work well to this setup, I'm going to add one cup of white vinegar. This is a situation where it certainly would start to get more cost effective for me to use citric acid. The reason why I still use vinegar is because that's what I'm used to. It's already dissolved and it's what I'm comfortable with. But absolutely, you could play around with this with citric acid and citric acid can be a lot more cost effective. So things are still cold and now I'm gonna bring over our yarn. I squeezed out most of the water from the pre-soak. And again, we've added the acid already, but I'm sort of doing a quick dip, another dip, move it a little bit, and now I'm stopping. I'm not gonna touch it anymore. If I were, and I'm gonna turn on the heat. 
If I were to continue to move the yarn in the die pot, then the, as I say, as I poke it, then the die would be able to sort of like move into the inside of the plies a little bit more. And so this is gonna help us get decent coverage, um, but hopefully that coverage will be a little bit shallow, which honestly might not be something we'll be able to tell really well until our yarn is dry. But anyway, I am going to heat this up and I'll set a timer for 45 minutes. With this big pot, it's gonna take a really long time to heat up, but in 45 minutes, uh, we should be warm and be able to see how much pink is left or not. I believe that the pink orchid dye can strike pretty quickly based on uh, some videos I did for Hanukkah once with cool vats, but also from the Valentine's Day yarn I did earlier this year where I was trying to add the yarn to a hot dye bath and it soaked up that dye so fast that I couldn't get coverage all over the yarn, even just doing a quick dip in and shimmy. And so that is giving me my fingers crossed here. Now, it's possible that we could get it and it could feel subtle. It's possible that this is something that just works better with a deeper color like black or navy because there's more contrast with what other color that we have. But I am very excited to see how this works and then decide if we want to over dye it with some yellow in a different kind of setup so that way the yellow will penetrate more. But I think, for example, glazing with yellow wouldn't necessarily work super well because, and I don't know if this video has come out, but I have tried yellow on yellow speckles and while it works, there's just not enough contrast there. And so you really do need that contrast in order to feel the glaze, whether it's contrast in hue, potentially. And so with a pink and a yellow, there should be contrast between the more pink orange spots and then the more yellow spots. And so that should be vis visually fun or just a contrast in depth, like we see sometimes with the navy with pink or something underneath it. But yeah, we'll see if this works. And if it does, we know that we can sort of start with these conditions. And if it doesn't, then maybe we'll need to play around and modify things and maybe give this a shot starting hot as well. The one downside to pink orchid as a dye is that it does not dissolve well for a dye stock. And often when I've used it, sometimes I describe it almost as feeling pearlescent uh, because it sort of feels a little bit more like a suspension until it's in a hot bath. So again, we'll see what happens. It's a glorious, glorious pink. I really, really like it. And cross fingers. All right, let's look. So first impressions. I am seeing some deep pink and I do see some pastel pinks in here. Whether or not it actually feels glazed, it may. Oh my goodness, this may have worked. Ooh, ooh, okay, this is very, very, very exciting. Uh, I don't know if I will be able to show it on camera really well yet, but I think, I think we have a glaze. So I think what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna let this heat for 20 more minutes in the pot because it's finally heating up, and then we will remove it, let it cool completely, and wash it because I wanna see this yarn dry. I debated over dyeing it, but I think that I wanna see the proportions to know if we wanna to try to increase the amount of pink that we have here so we would potentially get more contrast or just start with yellow and go for it with these proportions. But seeing the yarn dry will help me make those determinations. And then we'll continue on with this video and do some other version of this glaze. So this won't be the end of the video, but we will look at dry yarn in the middle of the video to learn a little bit more. But I'm excited. All right, we are done heating this yarn. So I am going to carefully remove it, but I don't know, I don't think it picks up well on camera yet. So we'll see once it's dry if I can show how part of it feels glazed. I feel like it worked uh, pretty well. So anyway, I'm going to set this yarn aside to cool completely so we can wash it. Let's wash our pink glaze attempt. Now, the things are completely cool and so there's no longer seam. I definitely feel like I see some of a glaze. And 
yeah, I think that it is also a little subtle. So I think that the best way to do this type of glaze would be over uh, some colors that contrast with the pink because the pink isn't that dark. But so far, I'm not seeing any bleeding and I'm not expecting to see any because this is a color I've used a lot. I'm gonna add a little bit of dish soap though. Uh, yeah, so the thing I'm most curious to see is whether or not we want to try this with a little bit more done or stick to the proportion that we have here. Uh, but I think it is very pretty. And even though you can see that the yarn is very tonal, uh, it does strike pretty qu quickly. Uh, we do have some amount of coverage all over. But anyway, I'm not seeing any bleeding here either. So I'm gonna finish rinsing out the soap. Then I'm gonna put the yarn through my spin dryer, hang it up to dry so we can figure out what we're gonna do next. Here is the finished dry yarn from the first round. And it did work. I'm not sure how well the camera is picking up that like airbrushed feel. The feel where in places it almost is like the dye just is on the halo of the yarn. And if like I untwist, you can see that there's clearly some areas that did not pick up the color. And I'll do this with my better lighting at the end. I'm not sure how well it's showing up on camera, that there's just this light wash of pink with a subtle pastel pink underneath. I'm not ready yet to necessarily try this over another color. Let me zoom in on another spot. Maybe at this exposure, you can kind of see how there's like a little bit of dark pink just on the outside. I'm not ready yet to try this over yellow or over another color. I first wanna see if I can kind of up the volume of the pink orchid. So that way maybe there's a little bit more contrast between the bare yarn and that little bit of pink because if we don't end up with a lot of contrast with the glaze, then adding more other color will just make things feel more subtle. The other thing that's interesting to note is that this yarn feels a lot more tonal than some of the yarn that I did with navy. There's some areas where it's just really, really pastel. And I think that's because the pink orchid is striking so fast, which is a good thing. But anyway, let's set up for the next round. I put on my respirator mask, safety glasses, and gloves, and measured out 0.8 grams of the pink orchid dye, and then dissolved this dye in some hot tap water. The best that I could. Pink orchid doesn't dissolve really, really well. Just like last time, we have 32 cups of water, one cup of white vinegar in my dye pot. It's all still cold. And we're gonna add that 0.8 grams of dye that I had just measured. Um, rinsing out the cup. I'm gonna rinse out this cup one more, or two more times, we'll see. Trying to just make sure we get all the dye into our container. Now, I know my spoon is really small, but we can still get a really good stir with this to distribute this color through the liquid. This is only double the amount of dye that we tried last time, but uh, hopefully this will just amp up the volume of what we observed before a little bit. I'm now coming in with the 200 grams of Swish DK, but this time I did not squeeze out all the liquid from the pre-soak. So there is some uh, liquid in here and I'm raising it, lowering it, sort of giving it a little bit of wiggle, and now I'm stopping. <laughs> I'm stopping, I'm not gonna stir anymore. We did our best to help open things up, get coverage all around. And I am going to turn on the heat to start heating this up, letting the dye do its thing and hopefully striking quickly onto the yarn. So I'll check back in in about 30 minutes, but if I notice it's boiling, which it may not be boiling by then, then I'll reduce the temperature. It's been about 30 minutes and I am going to Risk moving, yeah, we've absorbed most of the color. I do see some glaze on here, and I feel some areas that maybe won't feel glazed, but I don't know. Um, I'm again gonna need to see it dry to know for sure. So this is definitely working, but because the pink is just not as saturated as navy, the results are gonna be more subtle overall. So I'm gonna let this heat for 20 more minutes since the dye bath is now hot. And then I'm going to let the yarn cool. I'll wash it off camera 
and then we'll take a look at the dry yarn to decide how we may want to proceed. Excuse the poor lighting, but we have one of the first skeins we glazed with Pink Orchid and one of the second, and pumping up that pink did a lot of good. Unfortunately, I don't know how it's showing up on camera, but see how it just sort of feels airbrushed? How we have that little bit of coverage on in just like a small portion of the yarn, but it didn't even go in between the plies. It is beautiful. I am not sure how well it'll show up on another color, but let's go ahead and quickly dye up a yellow tonal yarn and then try to glaze with pink orchid on top of it. Crossing our fingers along the way. Since we're gonna try this one more time, I wanted to start with creating a tonal yellow base. So I set up a dye pot with 16 cups of water, 50 milliliters of a 1% stock of Dharma's Brilliant Yellow, three tablespoons of white vinegar, and then 200 grams of dry Swish DK yarn. I started with dry yarn, so that way we would have a tiny bit more variation in here. Uh, this yellow can strike pretty quickly, and it's harder to see a little tonal variation in yellow because it is so subtle even when it's bright. But I let the pot heat up over the course of 30 minutes, and then removed the yarn to cool completely so we could start the glaze. I set up the glazing dye bath just like I did with the last round. We had 32 cups of water, one cup of white vinegar, and 0.8 grams of our pink orchid acid dye. The dye bath was completely cool when I went to add the yarn in, but there is one variable difference here from what we had done in the previous round. The yarn already has acid in it from dyeing the yellow layer, and so I'm not sure if that'll help the pink strike a little bit faster or what, but I did try to leave some liquid in the yarn for when we added it to the pot so that way it wouldn't soak up the pink, sort of like what we had done last time. Once the yarn was in the pot and I decided it was time to stop touching it, I turned on the heat uh, to bring it up to temperature and then let it heat for at least 30 minutes. It has been over 30 minutes and I don't know. I don't know if we're gonna feel glazed. Ooh, I see some yellow. Ooh, yes we do. Oh yeah, I see some glazing. I don't know if you'll be able to see on camera and it's hot, so I'm gonna be careful, but I see some areas that maybe feel glazed. It's subtle. I could have done a little bit less yellow, but yeah, I think that what I'm gonna do is I'm turning the heat off. I'm gonna let the yarn cool in the pot for a bit. Then I'll remove it, let it finish cooling, and then I'm gonna go ahead and wash it off camera because I'm not expecting any bleeding. But I do want it to dry so we can come back and take a closer look at this and our first two attempts. I did consider trying to use the pink orchid over a fluorescent lemon glaze, but I had the brilliant yellow dye stock, and so that's why I went with that yellow. But one of the problems of trying to glaze with a bright color and I've talked about this before, is that if there isn't a lot of contrast in the saturation intensity of that color, you might not really see the glaze as well. When we're glazing with navy and we have it over a bright color, there's a hue difference, so that gives some contrast, but then there's also an intensity difference. And the dark navy is so dark that you can see you feel like you see through, or it's almost like a haze of the navy. And so I think where the pink is darker, we see that, but it's possible that I have no idea if I could get Cabernet or Deep Magenta to glaze, um, or if those colors might take too long to absorb, so that wouldn't work very well. But it's something to consider because doing a yellow glazed with Cabernet, if I could get that to work, would have a similar contrast to the navy. Uh, and so those, I guess, are things to consider and why a pigment that on its own has more contrast with the bare yarn might be an easier starter place. Uh, for example, I think that glazing with yellow, while yellow strikes fast, it would be really hard to see. And so there are some cases where maybe say you had a solid pink yarn and you try to glaze with yellow, you can feel that a little bit of like orange, it wouldn't really be the same because it would just be hard to see. Uh, so those are just things to keep in mind. 
keep in mind as we're working on this, but I'm very excited to see this yarn dry. Here is all of the yarn that we glazed with Pink Orchid, and it worked. It really, really did work. Now, to be fair, since this is a bright color we're glazing with, the color that you have underneath is going to impact the color that you see a lot more. Uh, the final colorway it almost feels like we glazed with a red. It doesn't really feel as pink because the yarn overall feels really orange. But let's take a closer look at the glaze over orange because that's the one we haven't really looked at dry yet. As we're looking at these strands, it's not speckling, right? But you feel just a little bit of the color and then you see that yellow beneath it. And so it's orange, yes. But if you look close, then you're like, wait a minute, what color is this? <laughs> I'm not sure how well it's showing up on camera, but you can see that we've got some of that red on one side of the strand and then not the other. If we untwist, you can see that it's really just lightly on that outside. And it gives the yarn so much depth and dimension and is really pretty. This effect is also really, really pretty over the white like this is the the second one i did the one that is a little bit deeper and again i am not sure how well this is picking up on camera uh, but i feel like again it's more dramatic when it's with the navy but it does exist it helped for sure that i knew how quickly this color strikes and so having a feel of different colors before you want to use it for a particular technique can be really helpful to get good results at first. But you see, we did tests and I did three different iterations here. And I may go back to trying to glaze yarn that's really hot in some ways that could give some better results. It's just, you see how the pink, we have a lot of tonal variation in here. It's not like we have a super even layer of it across. My thought is that if we had tried to do this hot, the color would have struck really, really fast, but we wouldn't have had as much of the color all over the yarn as we do here. And so, yeah, I mean, I, I'm going to do more deep dives in the glazing. I have to. This is a technique that uh, eludes me a bit, but also is awesome and I love. <laughs> The difference between having just a little bit of the pink orchid and having it maybe like twice as much of that pink orchid there is so subtle because in both cases we have a very similar pastel pink that is sort of showing through it. But you do almost feel more of a glow here and that is really cool. I mean, picking up pink on camera can be hard, and so therefore I'm never sure how well this is showing up. But you do kind of just feel the patchiness, but the sort of even patchiness, and it's just so fun. I have no idea who originally termed the coin glaze, but it does evoke a similar thing where if you use a dark clay or a light clay, the glaze is going to look different because some of what's beneath the yarn is going to show through. And I absolutely love it and need to try to play around with this using other types of colors. I think that that would be really, really fun. Val, thank you so much for being my lab partner for today's episode of Dye Pot Weekly. All along the way, I wasn't sure how many projects we were gonna do in this one video. And we ended up doing three and I'm so glad that I tried so many different tweaks on this colorway. If you would like to learn more about how you can become a lab partner like Val for an episode of Dye Pot Weekly, go and check out the listings in the Chemnitz Creations Etsy shop. There are two different types of listings. One is just a lab partner listing and the other is a last minute lab partner listing where I've already started the dyeing project but then I can film and include some last minute shout outs for you in the video. You can find more details in the links that will be down in the video description. Val, thank you again for being my lab partner, and I really hope you're gonna love your yarn. Now, I definitely don't plan to systematically go through every single dye in my collection and note these ones strike fast, these strike slow. But some of this is something that you learn the more you play with different colors, and then you see, oh goodness, this 
kit strap to the yarn a lot faster than I, than I thought. Or honestly, from doing a leave no die behinds where I would add things in and I take it out, I'm like, okay, this looks glazed. How come I keep doing that on accident? And I think the answer there is adding the yarn and leaving it in the pot, Rebecca. So it's possible that hot, maybe the mistake is removing the yarn from the pot. You add the yarn in and then leave it. Just like I do here with the cold, leave it and let it absorb all that color. And so maybe that is what I need to try and play around with that, revisiting things hot again. Because in any of the circumstances when I tried it hot, did I just leave, ever leave the yarn in the pot to absorb all the color? Or did I always remove it? That's something that's very interesting and worth me exploring more. Thank you all so much for joining this whole ride as I tried glazing with something that is not navy blue. If you loved the video, please make sure you're subscribed, turn on notifications so you never miss a new video. A lot of times I will decide that I'm gonna live stream fairly last minute, and so having your notifications on is the best way to make sure you can join and hang out while I am streaming. And of course, you don't wanna miss any of the Dipot Weekly episodes or everything else that I put out on the channel. If you love the content I'm creating and want to help support the channel on another level, I do have a Patreon. You can learn more at patreon.com slash chemnits. I also have an Etsy shop where a lot of my hand dyed yarn ends up. But since I know a lot of you are dyeing your own yarn, sometimes having non-yarn ways that you can support the channel is really, really handy. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and thank you so much for watching.